is fuel for your body, your mind, and definitely your sport. But let's face it, nutrition is confusing and the expectations on girls and women to be thin and have a six pack are exhausting. If you've ever been frustrated with your body, confused about nutrition, obsessed with eating healthy or guilty when you don't, under ate, over ate, or overtrained, and overwhelmed with all the pressure, then this podcast is for you. Nutrition can be easy, you can take control of it, but it might start with letting go of control by asking for help and making a change. I'm Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, sports dietitian and owner of Rise Up Nutrition, where I empower female athletes to overcome nutrition concerns and perform at their highest level, to stop being confused by all the mixed or harmful messages, and finally have confidence in your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, owner and sports dietitian of Rise Up Nutrition and your host of the Female Athlete Nutrition Podcast. Today, I want to address the topic of performance nutrition and what it actually means to fuel for performance. Well, as a sports dietitian, this is literally like the The definition of my career is teaching clients how to use food as fuel to perform at their highest level. But if you've heard me talk in some other episodes, if you've been a listener, you've probably also heard me talk briefly about rejecting a diet mentality, getting out of a diet cycle, about avoiding fad diets. You've heard me maybe touch on the concept of intuitive eating a little bit. You've also probably heard me touch on recovery from disordered eating, energy deficiency, female athlete triad. And the truth is, I think that there is a place for all of this as it relates to sports nutrition. Otherwise, I wouldn't have talked about it in all my previous episodes. When it comes to performance nutrition and sports nutrition, all of that is part of it. I don't believe that sports nutrition is its its own thing. Like it's not its own diet, right? We don't have a sports nutrition diet in the same way that we might have a weight loss diet. That's not how I view it. When it comes down to it, you know, fueling for performance, you have to just ask yourself, what am I trying to perform at? That's what it comes down to. When you're fueling for performance, you are making sure that your nutrition choices are in line with obtaining a desired outcome. And what's really cool is that performance can definitely be traditional sport. So performing your best at a soccer game, running a PR in a half marathon, performing your best to get a scholarship at a collegiate university athletic program. When you use nutrition, you can absolutely achieve a higher level of physical performance to help you achieve these physical and sport desired outcomes. But I also want to expand your mind to think about performance in other areas of your life. And so briefly, I will tell you about a time in my life where I was a performance dietitian with Air Force Special Operations. That's where I used my knowledge of nutrition and counseling athletes, but in a tactical setting with military quote-unquote athletes. The performance that we were trying to achieve with these soldiers and warriors was not to win or lose a game, nor was it really to hit a PR. I mean, sure, they all cared about how much they could bench press and squat, But the performance we were looking for was career performance, sustainability in their job throughout multiple deployments. Now, expand your mind even further. What does performance mean in your life? If you are not a high-level athlete and if you are not uh, military special operations, like the two examples I just gave, performance can still matter to you. Waking up every day with energy to perform your best at your job that can require a lot of physical and mental energy, clarity, and focus. And nutrition can absolutely help you in your performance, no matter what your job is. Some of you might have very physically demanding jobs. Firefighters. One of my clients moves furniture at a store. That's physically demanding on her. 
But even showing up to your job with, like I said, mental clarity and focus to make decisions, especially if you are, you know, in a high level business or management position where, you know, business success depends very much on some of these decisions that you make or the team that you lead. You can absolutely use nutrition to help you perform better in these scenarios. Let's expand your mind even further and think about your performance when you come back home and you are keeping up with your family and all the moving parts that family and home life presents for you. Are you showing up as the best partner and spouse that you can be, as the best sister, as the best mom that you can be? So as we continue to dive into this topic of fueling for performance, we first have to start with asking ourselves the question, what is the performance that I'm looking for? And the reality is you might be looking for a little bit of everything, right? If you are a runner trying to hit a PR, I'm sure you're also trying to have performance in your job, various things that you do for a job and performance with your family, right? There's crossover in everything. But for the purpose of this conversation, I mean, really think about one thing. What am I trying to perform my best at? And once you've got that, then what we do is we think about how nutrition can impact your performance, both in the short term and in the long term. So short term performances, we are thinking about how can you get enough energy to get through this run or to perform your best during this game or tournament or race. You can use nutrition to carb load the week of a big race coming up. You can use nutrition to plan out your meals on game day and strategically figure out when your meals and snacks will be so that you will have enough energy with minimal GI disturbances throughout your tournament day or your game day. You can use performance nutrition to recover appropriately after a game or performance or race with certain electrolytes and food and fueling so that you are recovering optimally and getting back on your training plan as expected the next week. So there's definitely a lot of manipulations that we can do both with food ingredients, hydration, electrolytes to ensure that your short-term performance in any physical activity is tailored to your needs and setting you up for success. And really for most athletes, it really does mean minimal GI disturbances, optimized energy, and quick recovery. That's I feel like that's really what it boils down to, those three things. Minimal GI disturbances, optimized energy, and quick recovery. That's what you want to focus on certain foods to help you do that. In a non-athletic scenario, your short-term performance might be waking up every day and making sure that your hydration is on point so that you can have that mental clarity and focus during a long day of work. Your short-term performance might be making sure you don't skip lunch so that by the time you're done with your job and you come home to your family, you still have energy to show up for your family. Performance in this regard might be less about specific nutrients, but still about a proper fueling schedule and plan. As much as I might believe in some concepts of intuitive eating, I think we can all resonate with the quote that says, failing to plan is planning to fail. And that definitely applies to our nutrition as well. Some level of planning is absolutely crucial to make sure that you are making decisions, food decisions that will be in line with your ultimate goal, with your performance goals. Now that's just short-term stuff, but switching now to long-term performance, again, in an athlete's mind, yeah, it's important to perform your best during this race or during this game, but the only way you can do that is if you are fueling your body consistently well throughout an entire training program or throughout an entire training season. So we do have to think about nutrition in more of a wider lens of getting you through a training program. And here we're looking at some nutrients that might not matter so much on a day-to-day basis. I mean, let's face it, if you don't get a lot of omega-3s today, you're going to be totally fine. Nothing bad's going to happen. You're not going to die. The world's not going to end if you don't get your omega-3s in today. But if you go an entire six months without a good dose of omega-3s and you are constantly training your body at a really high level and you're not recovering well and you get injured, now we start to run into problems. 
Same thing can be said for something like vitamin C. If you don't get enough today, that's totally fine. But once an entire season goes by and your body starts getting run down, your immune system starts to get compromised, and you're consistently not getting enough vitamin C, that's when we start to get sick. So when we're looking at long-term performance, we're definitely trying to pay attention to the cumulative effect of how your nutrition gets you through an entire season. For somebody who's not necessarily a competitive athlete, and we're, we're thinking about the term performance in more of those broader senses of the word that I mentioned, then long-term performance is really coming down to sustainability. Any approach that you take with your nutrition should be as sustainable as possible. And that's why we see so often that these fad diets fail because you might follow it for three or four months. You might be able to follow this really low carb diet, but then four months later, it's unsustainable. And this actually isn't helping your long-term performance because now we're flip-flopping between different diets. Our metabolism is jumping through hoops. And it is affecting us in our day-to-day job performance, family performance, etc. So just to recap, fueling perf- for performance, number one, you have to ask yourself, what is my performance? What is my purpose? What am I trying to achieve here? And then once you have that, figure out what are some short-term ways that nutrition will impact my performance and what are the long-term ways nutrition can impact my performance. Some of the basic principles of sports nutrition are going to come down to understanding your energy needs as it relates to your sport. And I don't think I'll be able to go into everything completely in depth. So I'm just going to give you the broad strokes overview here because yeah, there's going to be different nutritional requirements for a rower than a marathon runner or a football player. But sort of the foundation here is that, you know, what a non-athlete should eat, an athlete should still eat what health guidelines we recommend for a non-athlete, meaning we want complex carbohydrates, whole grains. We still want fruits and vegetables. Those are all still really important things to focus on, whether you're an athlete or not. But sort of a foundation of sports nutrition is know that you need more energy to sustain your training demands, which usually means you're going to need more food. And the types of foods that you might need more of can vary sport to sport, season to season. But for sure, an athlete does need more carbohydrates because carbs are your body's main energy source. It is what your muscles primarily use when you engage in any physical activity. So right away, sort of foundation of a sports nutrition diet is to have appropriate and ample amounts of carbohydrates to sustain your performance. Now in that long-term approach, we're just knowing that, hey, athletes should be eating carbs. And in a short-term approach, we can actually tailor this maybe week to week or day to day with having some carbs on easy training days, more carbs on moderate to hard training days, and the most carbohydrates on very hard competition race day or game day. So as you increase carbohydrates through various different training levels, You might decrease some other things. So for example, on a really hard training day, vegetables aren't the priority, right? That's not what you need in the short term on race day or game day. You don't need as many vegetables. That's something you need in long term, but not necessarily on race day or game day because it's not fueling our performance. So on that really hard training day or competition day, you actually don't need to focus on vegetables. So as you increase your carbs, you can decrease your vegetables versus on an easy training day, again, looking at more holistic health with that long-term approach, we can focus on including more vegetables in our meals and snacks when it's not race day, when it's not competition day. When you're thinking about performance in a non-athlete scenario and you are thinking about performance for your job or your clarity and focus, then you might not have these day-to-day or week-to-week fluctuations in portions. Instead, you're just looking for consistency. How can I consistently fuel my body with all food groups to maintain this performance outcome in more of a mental regard? 
you might be looking for just a balanced plate, maybe equal proportions of carbs to protein to vegetables and fruits at most of your meals. Consistency and equality. Probably the next biggest principle or thing that I teach as a sports dietitian when it comes to fueling for performance is having some sort of fueling plan. This is really just a a way for you to figure out when you have time to eat based on your daily schedule and your workout schedule. Having a fueling plan that ensures that you are eating before every training session, after every training session, and then every few hours throughout the day so that you're maintaining good energy balance and supporting your muscle recovery. This might look different than non-athletes who can just have three meals a day or even you know, just have their meals during their lunch break at work. And that might not be so easy for an athlete who has a training session, you know, just an hour after lunch. So really dialing in your fueling schedule is kind of a foundational principle of sports nutrition. Where I see a lot of people going wrong, even if you're not a high level athlete, is not even having a basic fueling schedule like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I cannot tell you how many people that I've come across in this world who talk to me about their nutrition who aren't eating breakfast or are skipping lunch. This happens so often. And so again, fueling for performance, what is your desired outcome? If your outcome is health and happiness and focus at work and showing up for your family, then even you need to be on a fueling schedule. Maybe it doesn't have to be so tailored and customized and individualized as an athlete who needs to eat every you know, three hours and basing it around their workouts, but even you should have some sort of fueling structure to help you maintain consistency. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? And maybe a snack in there as well. And for the athlete, it's looking something more like pre-training fuel, post-training recovery, breakfast, snack number one, lunch, lunch number two, dinner, snack number two. I always joke with my clients that we don't have traditional names for meals. It is totally okay to have lunch number two or breakfast number four or snack number six. It's just really difficult because an athlete does have a fueling schedule that looks a lot different. And sometimes we can't fit everything into these traditional molds of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that's okay. The last thing I want to hit on that really exemplifies what fueling for performance is, I sort of already mentioned, is just hitting some key nutrients. So every human being on this earth does need vitamins and minerals. We all need iron. We all need magnesium. But during an athlete's training and different seasons and periods of peak performance, some nutrients might come into higher demand or some nutrients are just at a higher risk of depleting faster. Now, it's not as many as you think. A lot of athletes jump to thinking they need to be on 10 different supplements or taking all these multivitamins, and that's not necessarily true. I actually still believe in a whole foods approach and supplements don't need to be taken, even if you are a high-level athlete but they might be needed during certain time periods. So if you are going through an injury, this is a time where we wanna take a closer look at things like omega-3s, vitamin C, collagen. Of course, it totally varies pending the specific injury. If you are in endurance sports, we wanna take an extra close look at things like iron or maybe even caffeine in certain sports can be used as an ergogenic aid, not just to wake you up in the morning with your morning cup of joe, but it can actually be strategically used to help boost your performance if taken in the right dose and at the right time. Certain sports might want to use creatine to help with muscle mass or muscle recovery. And these are the extra special attention to supplements that I would say, you know, the everyday person really doesn't need. Just focus on whole foods and the athlete should also be focusing on whole foods, but take an extra look pending what our desired outcome is for performance and where in our season are we, are we dealing with any injuries or deficiencies that we need to overcome so that we can train at our highest level. So I think that sort of summarizes what sports nutrition is, it's 
really just modifying, you know, what is a healthy diet? And I sort of have air quotes around that, but what is a healthy diet for anybody to achieve a desired performance outcome? And then for the athlete, it's, well, now we're asking our body to do something and achieve something physically, both in the short term and the long term. So what do I need to fuel myself with to achieve that? But what sports nutrition is not, it is not anything that should only be considered short term, right? So I do see a lot of people who on the day of their competition or the week of a race, suddenly they're caring about nutrition. And look, I'm, I'm glad that you care, but as an athlete, you do need to start caring about it before race day or competition day. If you just have never really paid attention to your nutrition and then you sign up for a 10K and you think, oh my goodness, I must need more carbs. So let me eat a plate full of spaghetti the night before carbs. That's actually not the right way to approach it. So sports nutrition should not be done only in the short term. It should be something that is being implemented regularly throughout your training so that it helps you in that short term on that day during that race. Another thing that sports nutrition is not is not weight loss focused or aesthetics focused. Yes, even in the sports like gymnastics and dance where we think we are being judged by how we look, you need to remember that you actually are being judged by how you perform. You are not being judged on how you look. You're being judged on how you perform. And so we can utilize nutrition to help you perform better. A lot of people will walk into something like a GNC supplement store and it will have the word sports nutrition written all over it, but that is really just marketing to loop you in and really what they're doing is trying to have you focus on an aesthetic goal of whether it's getting a six pack or looking a certain way, trimming off belly fat. This is just diet culture and weight loss disguised as sports nutrition. So I really want to caution you there because true sports nutrition is not focused on aesthetics. It is focused on performance. Another thing that sports nutrition is not is not unsustainable. That means that if you are trying to follow a sports nutrition diet and it's unsustainable for you and you can't stick to it, then we're probably approaching your sports nutrition wrong because this should be sustainable. Again, it is not a diet of any sort where you go on your diet and off your diet. When you are fueling for performance, it should be a completely sustainable thing because in fueling, that's how you can sustain your performance. I mean, it's just, there's no other way to to really say it. When your performance is the driving factor, you are fueling yourself so that you can do that. And it's not the other way around of, well, now I can't sustain my nutrition anymore. I hope this was a helpful little breakdown of what sports nutrition is and what it's not. And as I continue to talk about nutrition for performance, for health, for athletes, For non-athletes, and I incorporate topics like rejecting diets and diet culture, that's why I wanted to provide this little bit of clarity that you can avoid that traditional diet culture and weight loss and fad diets while still caring about your nutrition and even using nutrition in a specific way to achieve an desired outcome and optimized performance. They are two different things. And if you have any questions about how you can start tailoring your sports nutrition diet to reach your personal goals, then I would love to chat with you about that. I will include some links in the show notes of some more resources or how you can get in touch with me. I really hope you enjoyed that episode and thanks for listening. But before I let you go, I have free resources that you can have access to right away, right now, so that you can start fueling your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. First, I have your Red S recovery race. If you've ever wondered if you might be struggling with Red S, curious to learn more, or know you have Red S and are looking to recover fast, 
then you can head to www.riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S and download the red S recovery race. See how you place and figure out the next steps to recovery. Plus, while there, I have a few other great resources for you, including three nutrition secrets that every elite athlete swears by and access to our private Facebook community, Female Athlete Nutrition. So again, to gain access to all of this, head to riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S, that's backslash R-E-D-S, and you can gain access and get the help you need fast. Too many girls and women and female athletes struggle with nutrition, but you don't have to any longer. Become fierce, fit, and fueled. Links in the show notes, and I'll see you next time.